and Happy New Year. Um, I'm Christina Rodenbeck, and I'm here with my friend Sally Kirkman. And we're going to talk to you about 2022. It's very exciting. Uh, a new year. And this is a special podcast. I, my website is the Ox Oxford Astrologer. Sally's website is sallykirkman.com. Um, if you want to take this further. So Sally, we're going to try and talk really quickly in an hour about 2022 and what lies ahead. But first, I think we should have a quick look back at 2021. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed, because we're still in quite a time, really, aren't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, well, 2021, what a year, uh, you know. But, you know, that's just b bish bosh. You know, the major aspects in 2021 were really that hard square, which is a hard aspect between Saturn in Aquarius, um, which was all about restrictions, and Uranus in Taurus, which was all about trying to not have restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, gee, I wonder how that worked out in the collective, um, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, the other big one was the Jupiter, wasn't it? Yeah, what was, yeah. Yeah, because Jupiter's been, apart from a brief window in 2021, mid-May to the end of July 2021, Jupiter's been stuck in the star signs ruled by Cap, uh, ruled by Saturn, Capricorn and Aquarius, really, for the last couple of years. I mean, and I have to say, you know, there's in 2021, I enjoyed that middle period. Um, I was in London, things were opening up, I was going to, you know, live music, live art, I had friends who were going off on holidays quite successfully at that time, actually. Um, so, and there was a real kind of joie de vivre, it felt like, you know, that we had freedom again. <laughs> We had freedom that felt like hope in the summer. This was in England. I know not every country was the same, but, you know, that's what Jupiter's potential is when it was in its, um, you know, it was in Pisces, its sign of rulership at that time in 2021. And that was, for me, it was, it was a peak. It was an opening. Um, but, yeah, that Saturn Uranus square, I think, was very brutal, um, very tough for a lot of people. I think it's also you know, that we've had this restrictions and the freedom, you know, the clashes between the two. I also think it's played out, you know, Uranus in Taurus, the sign of the money. I mean, for some people, these restrictions have been devastating financially. Um, yeah, for some people, they've been, they've absolutely made tons. And that's what, yes. I mean, this has been a big money-making opportunity for some people, which is rather disgusting, but it's a true fact. Yeah. Um, and so that's the way it goes, isn't it? With um, uh, with anything like this, any extreme situation, there are extreme beneficiaries as well. Um, yeah. And yeah. of course, Pluto has still been in Capricorn. You know, Pluto is the sign of great wealth in, sorry, the planet of great wealth in the sign of, hmm. uh, you know, the establishment of um I would say, you know, plutocrats. We've had plutocrats being plutocratic. And right yeah. now, actually, we're in this moment, like today, it, you know, we're still in a Venus-Pluto conjunction. Speaking of the two money signs, making a, they make three conjunctions. That's how 2022 starts, doesn't it? Yes, Venus, yeah, Venus, um, the planet that rules love and money. Um, Pluto. I do think I think the Pluto in Capricorn has been more about the plutocrats. Actually, that's that's kind of the symbol for that. Um, this Venus Pluto is. I think it's been tough in, in many ways. There's been you know a lot of not just financial difficulties for people, but also I think relationships have been so interesting during this Venus Pluto, which has dominated the end of 2021. Um, you know, some relationships have almost, well, some have fallen apart that I know, um, or people walking out, not wanting, you know, and, and also then we get back to this clash of the Saturn Uranus. I think this is, it's what's called, it's caused division within society as well. And, and a lot of that is around, you know, it is around the vaccines, I think, as well, and, and what's the right thing to do or what's not. And I know of a lot of families who it's been really difficult um, here in England, again, you know, we've had this new variant that's just gone wild, actually. So a lot of people haven't been with their families over the Christmas period. People have had to isolate again. It's been a tough time. 
it has, you know, it's been a tough end to 2021 and we're moving into 2022, still with Venus and Pluto together actually. And they're not going to part until early March. So we've, we've still got this difficulty in the first couple of months. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and I think it's more difficult. So let's move into 2022 then. I mean, that was a very quick look at 2021, but we've only got an hour to talk about 2022. Um, you know, and Venus is retrograde for that first month, which is tough as well. I mean, for me, there are... Um, you know, I, it's good to emphasize the good bits. And one of yeah. the good things about Venus retrograde and Venus making this strong aspect with Pluto is the possibility for um, actually for healing on some level, because Venus is retrograding exactly over the spot mm -hmm. where all of those planets gathered in 2020 to start the pandemic. You know, at the start of the pandemic, we had that massive stellium and Venus is now going over that area with this retrograde. She's going over it three times. Um, and I think it's a chance for all of us to actually do what we're doing now, what we just did, which is to look back over the last couple of years and make some kind of sense of it, of it find some kind of forgiveness, um, find some kind of peace about what's been happening. Um, since it's in Capricorn, it's always a reality check, though, isn't it? It's not going all kind of misty eyed and uh, pretending it's all been wonderful. It's actually being real about it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. I, I, I agree with that. I quite like your take on that, actually. I think that uh, that's quite nice. Um, well, because otherwise you could just go down the route of thinking, oh, my God, it's Venus in the underworld for the whole of the first month of January you know January and, and you know every transit has its upside and its downside you know yeah. I mean one thing that we're as you say it's there have been you know there's a I you know both of us have probably dealt recently with people who are having quite a tragic time actually mm, yeah. um, and I, I think that you know it's I wouldn't want to sugarcoat that yeah. Um, but I also would like to emphasize, I think this is a bit of a nadir now. I think that things actually, this is the beginning, the beginning of 22, 22 is difficult and it just gets better. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. yeah. And it's not going to get better. Whoop de do overnight. No. But it's just coming, coming, getting better. It's coming out. Yeah. Um, agreed. And, and, you know, the other, symbol for me of Venus going down into the underworld is, you know, and I think I've talked about this before and it's, you know, it's going into Pluto's domain. So yeah. Scorpio, I often understand this deeply, actually. You, when you go into these dark places and you really do some, you know, intense soul searching, this Venus emerges from there. She gathers inner strength and she emerges as warrior woman. I mean, that's the mythology of this. She's a, she's a warrior. She comes out stronger. So, you know, we are in a situation in life where many of us are dealing with real difficulties, real pain, real tragedy, you know, but there is always that, that possibility of coming out of the dark and coming out richer, bringing hidden riches out into the light. So I think it's important for people to kind of hold on to that as well. Um, you know, there's, there's some kind of purging going on, a chance to kind of release stuff as well at the beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. and also she's going into the underworld with the lord of the underworld that's why this is such a powerful venus mm -hmm. retrograde it's really yeah. simple it's not quite you know because she retrogrades every 18 months and they're not always like this mm -hmm. but this time it's you know it's tough it's tough mm -hmm. um and i think she does gain more strength and you could actually say that um you know, if we were going completely mythological on this, that this time she's with the king of the underworld. She's with Hades himself. Um, and so she's maybe crowned queen when she's down there as well. So the other thing that happens with the myth of Persephone specifically yeah. is that she doesn't just go down there and, you know, she's not just a victim. Mm -hmm. She actually becomes the queen of the underworld. Mm -hmm. Um is crowned and then she gets out of there as well she doesn't get stuck she actually leaves mm -hmm. and becomes uh you know the daughter again when she comes out 
Mm. And I think that's an incredibly powerful part of that myth that we tend to overlook. Everybody gets fixated on the pomegranate seeds and her getting stuck down there and the abduction. Mm. But actually the other part of that myth is her, is her coronation mm. and, the, and her uh, survival and her ability to come back into the upper world and yeah. thrive and yeah. make things grow again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which which will happen, you know, when she so there's this warrior woman aspect, but there's actually also this the idea of the greening, you know, of the of regrowth mm. comes when Venus comes out. And as you say, this time she it, she's enriched. So there's, you know, whether it's literal gold and wealth or like manure, you know, it's the rich richness of the earth. Yeah um yeah that she thrives on and that is so i would say you know talking about 2022 uh january there's there's rich stuff in there but you need to be prepared to see this as quite an interior month for a lot of signs i mean obviously mm. um taurus and libra mm. too that are obviously going to be looking inward because they are ruled by venus mm. Mm. Yeah, and it's also, you know, this this is all happening in Capricorn, Venus in Capricorn, Pluto in Capricorn. So Capricorn has been such a sensitive point in your horoscope since January 2020, when there was the major Saturn-Pluto conjunction. So, you know, look at where Capricorn is in your horoscope, because this is where there's the real chance for some healing. This is where there's the chance to almost maybe put something to bed and mm -hmm. reemerge. Um, you know, there's also themes of uh, rebirth, renewal, when you kind of close the door, you look, you know, you, you put the past behind you. Um, so, I mean, for Capricorn, it's hugely important time because it's in your personal, personal house. So it's likely to be a personal transformation on some level, um, you know, whether it's to do with physical stuff or whether it's to do with kind of inner work. It's very personal for Capricorn. But wherever it falls in your horoscope, Capricorn, it's a huge chance to um just to kind of integrate things i think and look at this as a real potential of an ending some significant ending as, as the beginning of 2022 emerges yeah and it's a slow ending i mean this is the thing is that with um astrology often we want to say oh it's going to happen on the 9th of whatever and then that's going to be it um and actually this is the whole month it's going to take a month of uh I think integration is the right word. You use the word integration, mm. of integrating the stuff that's happened over the last couple of years yeah. which is to do with the pandemic. And for some people, there has been loss and death. Mm. Mm. Um, and it's interesting because there's um, what happens in February is then Mars comes into the same spot. So yes. this, with Venus, after Venus goes direct on the 29th, um, then you get Mars coming into the same area, which, which is this very sensitized place mm. where the stellium was. And then you, you get Mars stirring things up again and taking action. You mm. know, so I think that's quite interesting. So it may we may have a feeling of like having made our peace, and then suddenly Mars comes in and ruffles everything up again. Mm. Um, so be prepared for this to be quite a bumpy start to the year. Yeah. On the other hand, Jupiter is in Pisces, right? Yeah, and let's talk about Jupiter in Pisces. Back in its sign of rulership, December 29th, 2021, charging through Pisces now. I mean, it completes the whole transit through Pisces by May 11th, uh, 2022. Um, and I, I kind of, you know, we're talking, we're actually talking as Jupiter's just moved into Pisces um, on this podcast, you know, and also I'm very aware that the virus is, you know, Pisces is one of the star signs linked to viruses. I mean, the Pis um, the virus is raging, but in many cases, it's much milder. Um, you know, so Jupiter's move into Pisces, there's a, there's a chance of real kind of hope as if this might, you know, this might be a real shift in what's been going on. Um, but yeah, it brings hope. It brings, it brings faith. It brings Jupiter in Pisces is a wonderful placing in its sign of rulership um, and moving into the realm of the sea in a way with Neptune. I mean, we've got this, in the, the incredible aspect in 2022 is the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces on April the 12th, first time since 1856 that these two planets have come together. 
which we use a Pisces. Christina must be very exciting, I would have thought. <laughs> First time they should have come together in Pisces. We should in add. Pisces. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm really, really, really excited. This is about no boundaries, of course, mm. which is fine for some of us. Um, for me, I've uh, never been great on boundaries anyway. I try and be centered rather than boundary because I cannot do that too wobbly around the edges. Mm. Um, so for anybody with that kind of, I want to say that kind of pattern in themselves, which is most people who are a little bit psychic, who, who have that, who are sensitive, or, you know, if you want to call it um, highly sensitive people, this is quite exciting, but kind of scary at the same time, because suddenly there's no boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, anybody, any Pisces, any can Cancer, Scorpio as well, all the mm -hmm. water signs are really going to feel this a lot. Um, it's interesting. To, the reason I mentioned that um, uh, spiritual side, the side of, is actually that's in the 1850s is when spiritualism really took off. Yeah. There were, you know, there were a few things that happened in the 1850s that are, well, a lot that's connected with Neptune and Pisces. Mm -hmm. But I think spiritualism in particular, and uh, also there was a big religious revival in certain mm -hmm. parts of the world in mm -hmm. the 1850s. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that we might see with this, you know, with this time around is a return. I've been reading a lot of stuff about, um, I just see it keep on, on popping up. I mean, maybe someone's published a book about the return of paganism, which of course has been something that's been going on for a long time, but it's interesting that it's becoming quite, it's mainstreaming, you know, mm. that people are talking about the return of, uh, our con you know religious connection to the land mm. um and our uh, return of a kind of different kind of faith mm. uh, and the personal experience of the very very large um mm. and i think that's a neptune and pisces thing for everyone wherever it falls in your chart i mean i'm always interested uh, how it works for aries because it's right you know in the right spot you know it's in that 12th house so for mm. aries may really be having have a big spiritual mm. experience yeah. actually coming up in 2022 and mm. i think for everybody you know of course there's the whole artistic side the possibility mm. of uh i mean the other big thing that happened in the 1850s was that i if you're an opera fan at all wagner was creating um or imagining the um you know Gotterdam and the Valkyries the, the ring cycle mm. is not nothing you know he's the guy who invented the idea of the of the complete artwork where you're completely immersed in the art so he you know wrote the libretto he created the idea of a leitmotif which you hear in every single tv series you know the leitmotif is the music that comes on with the person when they come on so he he, he created in a way some of the the um some of the artistic stuff that we've become very used to on a common day-to-day uh, -day level you know with mm -hmm. television shows and stuff everything borrows from from Wagner from the ring cycle um or that's the beginning of this idea uh anyway mm -hmm. uh, so that happened in the 1850s too so there's these incredible imaginative uh breakthroughs which are going to be even bigger in 2022 so if you're an artist it's fantastic. Yeah, agreed. Um, I also, I mean, I want to say that if there's not a global meditation on that Jupiter Neptune in Pisces, the world is missing a trick, actually. I mean, it's it's absolutely ripe for that. It is about, you know, and I think people are looking, looking for something more. I know a lot of people who are doing more meditation, who are more, you know, there's a lot more, seem to be a lot more light seekers around. There seem to be a lot more empaths. I'm really aware of a much more kind of spiritual vibe that's that's coming in and, and i think it is it is bringing people a lot of a lot of hope a lot of kind of faith which is this this boundlessness of jupiter and neptune you do you need something we need something to believe in in this world we need to find you know where 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 hope and faith lie i mean that's a really key part um, and it's free folks um, and it's free it, it is free. free and this is one of the ways of freeing yourself from that pluto Mm. Capricorn mm. you know there's no you don't have to meditation is free mm. uh, spirituality is free 
there's no you know you can go out into the woods and do it you know this is not um and i think that is something that because we've had a lot of like the whole new age thing over the last 20 30 years has been very involved with capitalism you know people trying to sort of sell you snake oil right mm -hmm. um and you know this neptune jupiter conjunction in pisces is not about uh forking out for things is it it's mm -hmm. about sort of your own experience is mm -hmm. valid mm -hmm. yeah and it's a very i mean it's a very kind of i mean you you talked about the sort of mystical magical side of this jupiter neptune i think it could be a real time of revelation for people um but also i was going to say something now and that's gone completely out of my head probably <laughs> okay i just want to add you know i think for scorpios this is incredibly creative um, for Cancerians, I really think that you should think about doing some kind of spiritual pilgrimage this year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I mean it, you know, mm -hmm. if you can, even if it's a tiny one, sometime during that uh, Jupiter and Pisces period. Um, for um, Virgos, you know, I think this is, you know, this is about your relationships. You may meet someone who's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, you may fall madly in love. You, you know, it's about, I mean, the other thing this is about is having grand illusions being mm -hmm um uh living in a fantasy world and if that's that's actually okay to do sometimes as long as you're not affecting other people badly with it with you know crazy ideas about um moving everybody to mars for example elon musk um, yeah i i do also because i want to say about you know this this is i think what's really helpful with this Jupiter Neptune conjunction. Jupiter is the major player this year. The three major aspects involve Jupiter. So there's a Jupiter sextile Uranus in Taurus, Jupiter Pisces sextile Uranus in Taurus on February the 18th, Jupiter in Pisces sextile Pluto in Capricorn on May the 3rd. So there's support from these planets in Earth. So, you know, what you're talking about, the kind of, you know, the, the rise of paganism. And this is, earth signs are about nature they're about back to basics actually so there is this theme of um you know returning to nature um learning to share things more equally that's going on here um but also also with that it gives some grounding to that jupiter neptune there's a possibility with that jupiter neptune in pisces that it is too boundless you know and i'm thinking then for the people who the money sectors so leo and aquarius you know, just there's there's a real possibility of you be careful where you invest actually on that Jupiter Neptune. You know, be careful. You, you might want to give all your money away, which if if that's right for you, then fine. But be wary of kind of you know scams, deceptions as well. And I think we need these. You need the Earth. You need the common sense to come in. You need the sort of groundedness underneath to help stabilize the potential of this Jupiter Neptune wherever it falls. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, there is a, there's a theme of the bubble as well, isn't there? Oh, you definitely. Know, bubble, over inflation with Jupiter Neptune. It's going to be really interesting year for the economy. I think it's going to be a big year for the economy because, you know, the amount of debt we've got coming our way, you know, there's, there's, there's that, there's some kind of realities to. Have you seen the uh, price of electricity? What's happening with that? It's yeah. Double. Yeah. And, and Pisces rules gas, it rules oil, um, you know. It's water as well. Yeah. It's the commodities. It's it's commodities of life. Yeah. Well, oil and gas. I would do, you know, and water. Exactly. These um, essentials of these days. Uh, but you know, maybe it's peak. We always talk about peak oil, but you know, finish. Come on, we have to move on from fossil fuels. It's enough. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, if you think about it, the Jupiter and Pisces is on a little triangle. Um, you know, it's because it's got. Uranus helping it from one side and Pluto helping it from the other. So it's called a mini grand trine. And this is mm -hmm. actually, as Sally said, incredibly stabilizing and helpful. Mm -hmm. but if you're feeling, and I actually think that Saturn in Aquarius is really helpful too, because Saturn is really strong in its own sign. It's got less of this agitation from Uranus, although it's still there a little bit. It's like got backwash from the Uranus still. Um, but it's very stabilizing that Saturn in Aquarius. Mm -hmm. um, so it's in its own sign. 
Neptune's in its own sign. Jupiter's in its own sign. So we've got a lot of these outer planets in their own signs. Yeah. Um, so there's strength in other parts of the chart as mm. well. Mm. Um, but then, um, and as the other thing I want to just emphasize is that there's really, um, those are the three big aspects this year. Yes. That would have been mentioned. Um, as far as I'm concerned, 18th of February, 3rd of May, and the big conjunction of um, mm. Neptune and Jupiter. April 12th. Um, April 12th yeah and those three and that's and those are all Jupiter Jupiterian aspects yeah um which actually are all about expansion each one of those is expanding in a different way mm -hmm. um and that but then uh Jupiter moves into Aries and things mm -hmm. change doesn't it I mean mm -hmm. that's the other thing about this is all happening quite fast this yep. um expansive Jupiter I mean one other um sign that i think this is particularly important for actually is gemini because for gemini's this is right on the midheaven mm -hmm. so there's real potential here for i would say fame for certain gemini's yeah you no know? i mean for certain gemini's oh no not boris johnson yes boris johnson um it may be uh, you know too far do you know yes. going too far yeah uh, there, there may be too many lies, Christine. Yeah, you know, exactly. Neptune can deceive, can't it? It can deceive. So, yeah, and he may have, he may kind of bust out. Mm. He, he looks very, it looks very rocky for him mm. um, here at the moment. Mm. Oh God! Just going backwards briefly, I just have to say, Ghislaine Maxwell going down on the uh, Venus Pluto conjunction with yeah. Mercury and the Moon in Scorpio, and Jupiter going into Pisces. Mm. That was unbelievable astrology, wasn't it? Unbelievable. Yeah. But that's a good, you know, that's a good example of how, you know, things are working well. And she is a Capricorn as well, isn't she? She's a Capricorn. So very pow powerful stuff for her. Really powerful astrology. Yeah. Um, I mean, the other, the other star sign we must talk about, you know, is Sagittarius because Jupiter is your planet. Um, mm -hmm. as well as Pisces, it rules two star signs. So all this, you know, March and April are the big months when this whoosh of Pisces energy really gets going, because there's some lovely conjunctions. I mean, I wrote them down here, Sun, Jupiter, March the 5th, Mercury, Jupiter, March 21st, Venus, Jupiter, April 30th. So we've got these, you know, the, the inner planets um, are getting lit up by Jupiter. They're often lucky dates. They often bring opportunity your way. So these dates in March and April, and with the big conjunction on April the 12th, there's a lot of energy in the part of your horoscope ruled by Pisces. So for Sagittarius, this is at the base of your horoscope. It's about home and family. It's about your roots. You know, you could be I don't know, putting on another East Wing, West Wing on your place or <laughs> moving abroad or, you know, extending your family, welcoming people in as well. Because I just actually I just want to say about the Jupiter Neptune, I'm, you know, in past years when Jupiter has been opposite Neptune and Jupiter square Neptune. I mean, one of the other things that's gone on is there's been a real flood of refugees. Yeah, well, I mean, always coincided, you know, Neptune's the sea. We have these heartbreaking stories of refugees trying to get across the sea. So, you know, I think we are gonna have to, you know, relook at things globally, where, where you are, where people are. I mean, I think that's gonna be a big theme with this Jupiter, Neptune in Pisces as well. Yeah, and you know, you can see where that is already. What's happening in Afghanistan is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but back to more cheerful things. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, Pisces, uh, the Mars is in Pisces from April 15th to May 25th. So Mars comes into this Jupiter Neptune mix. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, then, then Jupiter moves into Aries, which is like a different kettle of fish, isn't it? It is. It's so, you know, Jupiter, I mean, Jupiter and Neptune is, um, it's kind of, there's a, you know, you, you feel like you're wandering around in your emotions, in your imagination. It's all about dreams and creativity. Jupiter and Aries, the first sign, you know, I often think of um, the fool in the tarot pack for Jupiter and Aries. There's something kind of, right, let's all go on an adventure. <laughs> right, let's start something new in this lovely kind of, you know, naive, I want to be the first to do that. Oh, it's this sort of, a, there's a childlikeness about Jupiter and Aries, I think. There's a real kind of, 
you know, faith in what you want to do. There's a playfulness with Jupiter and Aries. Um, and it will be there from May 11 to October 28. So there's a lot of time when we've got this real kind of, you know, fire sign energy. Great fun for Aries. Come on now, Aries. You need to be launching something new during these months. Doing something, you know, even if it feels a bit foolish or, you know, people are going, what are you going to do? Do something. Make the most of life. I mean, it's lovely. Yeah. I don't even think that's just to Aries. I think that's to everybody. If you want yeah. to start something, it might be quite a good time in those, those summer months when Jupiter is in Aries. It's the beginning. It's the beginning yeah. of the new 12 year cycle for Jupiter. Um, it goes all the way up to 10 degrees of Aries as well. It's like deeply goes deep into Aries. It doesn't mm -hmm. just hover around on the, on mm -hmm. the fringes. Mm -hmm. um, so any Aries who's born in um, you know March is gonna feel this right on their sun probably. Mm. um yeah so the energy is really different with jupiter and aries and that is quite interesting just as a sort of uh test in fact you know i think just to feel your own sensitivity the difference between jupiter and aquarius jupiter and pisces and jupiter and aries which we're getting in rapid succession is quite yeah. interesting as a as a sort of vibe whatever you want to call it jupiter and aries is enthusiastic that's the word, isn't it? It's the enthusiasm mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's bravery. And it's not, it's trying to let go of some of the past. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jupiter does get dragged back into Pisces in October, so it's not over. Mm -hmm. um, but there's there may be a kind of release when Jupiter gets into air into Aries. Mm -hmm. Mm. Not that I think Jupiter's bound up in Pisces at all. We talked about how that's boundless. It's mm. already a release for Jupiter being in Pisces and not having to go back into Aquarius. Yeah. It's yeah. Maybe more of an inner thing, you yeah. know, and that's maybe fits in with this early part of the year when Venus retrograde is helping us make sense of our actual position mm. actually happening mm. um, and make peace with it. So that then we can let that Jupiter and Pisces energy, that faith really buoy us up through the rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I think what's interesting about Jupiter's move into Aries, it gets into Aries and then immediately Mars, you know, yeah. Aries ruling planet also joins Jupiter. And there's a Mars Jupiter conjunction in Aries at the end of May. I think it's May 29th. So, you know, particularly in June, there's a lot of power in Aries. You've got Mars and Jupiter together. You know, these two are the freedom fighter. They're the energy, the drive. Um, you know, it's this real leap of faith. It's this willingness to kind of take risks, actually. So, again, look to where Aries falls in your horoscope. I mean, for the fire signs, it feels like a very creative time, but adventurous, too. I think it really is a time to sort of break boundaries or um you know create something new there's this this real creative urge i think with mars and jupiter together especially um, for sagittarians i mean it's it's obvious isn't it that that is very creative very exciting mm -hmm. um i mean of course this can be an explosive and aggressive energy as well jupiter mm -hmm. and mars together yes especially in aries yes so, you know, watch out for that i would say you know librans uh, you know, on the one hand, Jupiter in Aries is great, interesting new people, love, you know, benefactors, maybe a new partner, you know, this is all very good. But on the other hand, when Mars comes in there, watch out for people being very aggressive towards you. Mm. Um, so you may want to think about protecting yourself before that happens. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, Mars can also just be a very kind of testosterone -y person. Um, yeah so it, it can manifest two ways i'm thinking also for cancerians because aries is cancerians korean vocation so yeah. so it could be that you know cancerians are stepping into a new role where they can you know get things moving and fast mm -hmm. alternatively you could find that there's there's almost too much going on mm -hmm. in you know in your korean vocation and you're up against some strong competition so, you know, really with Mars, you want to try and harness it yourself. You want to be the powerful one in a way. You want to be the one with the energy um, driving it forward. Yeah. I mean, and if you can't, you want to make an alliance with the person who is. Yes. Okay? That's the thing. With So for Librans, you know, get that person on your side rather yeah. than trying to fight them because they're stronger than you. Okay. This is an important lesson of astrology is to know when your uh, opponent mm. 
bigger and stronger than you are. And I can say Libra, when Jupiter and Mars are in Aries, the opponent is bigger and stronger than you are. Yes. <laughs> to be on your side. Um, and the same is true for cancer. You know, you're right. You could try to climb the greasy pole or your boss could be really awful, right? And domineering. So mm -hmm. you need to get that, you know, be, be warned. <clears throat> it's only, a, you know, it's a transit, but you need to get them on your side somehow. Mm -hmm. Um, it's quite it's it's interesting astrology this isn't it because you know jupiter is in pisces which is incredibly selfless and giving and charitable um you know and then jupiter moves into aries and it's all about me 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some, it's all about self actually so there may be you know some people may experience this chef this shift from like oh i've been giving too much you yes. know i need to i need to now consider you know, I need to consider myself. I need to sort of put myself first. I need to be assertive or, you know, I need to, to look to my needs if I've been over giving or giving too much away. It's kind of coming back to yourself as Jupiter moves into Aries. Um, so, you know, who's, whose health sector is this? It is Scorpio. Scorpio. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a time to kind of then for Scorpios, for example, you know, look at your own health. Look at look your stress levels. What what do you need to do to kind of take care of you? Um, so it's, it's quite okay interesting. For, it's okay for Aries just to be really a bit selfish, frankly. You know, there are times for, to be selfish and there are times to be generous. Yeah. And I would say on this, you know, the time to be generous is when Jupiter's in Pisces and maybe the time to be a bit selfish and think about your own family. Mm. For example, if you're Capricorn, um, is with Jupiter, Jupiter in Aries. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a yin and yang, isn't there? I mean, this is super yang that we're talking about with uh, Mars and Jupiter and Aries in those summer. When is it? It's um, well, it really peaks in June. Actually, June, yeah. June is the big month when they're both in Aries. July twenty fifth of May to July fifth. Um, you know. That's a very, very yang time. It is. And for those people who are sort of more yin or, or, or don't really like that kind of energy, that's good to know, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's a very yeah. physical energy. Mm. Um, uh, and the Jupiter in Pisces is sort of the opposite. It's incredibly yin, you mm. know, Super mm. yin with Neptune and Jupiter in there. So this is a year where we kind of veer between very wa super watery and then very fiery. Mm -hmm. um, the fire does go down a bit though doesn't it because um mars then goes into gemini um yeah so we should better. should we talk about that now because i mean that's you know it's an extraordinary transit of mars isn't it once it yeah. moves into gemini which is august the 20th it doesn't leave till march it's in yeah. gemini for an unusually long it's time which you know always tells us that mars is turning retrograde so for the last two months of the year mars is retrograde in gemini I think it turns direction on October the 30th. Yeah. Um, and, and the real takeaway from this is Mars is in Gemini for a long, long time. Wherever Gemini is in your chart, yeah. it's going to have a lot of energy. But, you know, maybe retrograde energy, but it's actually Mars energy. So mm -hmm. there's, you know, for, I think that it's actually can be really, really positive having Mars in your sign. I mean, it's quite exhausting after it's been there a while but it means that you really can push forward. And this is fantastic for Gemini's who not only are having Mars in their sign, but they've also got Jupiter on the mid heaven again in yeah. autumn. So yeah. they're really, you know, able to sort of, when you have Mars in your sign, it gives you this wonderful boost of energy. Mm. Mm. You're able to get things done. You're braver. You're more assertive. Um, you're, you know, you're a winner. It's a, you know, having Mars on your side is like, it's about winning. But yeah, and I just want to say it's in Gemini. So this is, you know, this is crafty. It's cunning. It's a mm -hmm. war of words. It's not, you know, there's this, I mean, in a way it brings out those Gemini qualities more, doesn't it? Which is the trickster as well. Yeah, uh, I mean. Uh, so it's how you, you know, I'm thinking about how you go about winning. For Gemini's, the, the cunning side of Gemini is going to be really strong. I, um, I during this Gemini actually and I, I have to say I wouldn't particularly describe him as cunning but what he has got is his words are his weapons words are weapons absolutely and I think that's the power mm -hmm. that's the thing it's like 
very direct because suddenly your words become really direct. Yeah. You're very smart. Yeah. Than I. It's clever. And I don't mean smart. I see it to me, it's more direct than Gemini normally is. Mm. Yeah. Uh, be interesting again to see what happens with all the Gemini uh, politicians and etc. Yeah. Uh, and, and I do want to, there's a proviso here. I think also, I mean, and this is probably across the board for everyone, maybe the Mars ruled signs, Aries, Scorpio, also Gemini. I think when Mars is retrograde, retrograde, so November, December, be really careful what you say, be really careful what you write, you know, whether it's on social media or whatever, because once, when the planet's retrograde, it could really work against you. So I think that, that Mars retrograde in Gemini, we need to be careful what we say, or, or, you know, you could wound people with your words. So, so it, it, it's, you know, it's a time to kind of slow things down a little bit and, and, you know, think before you leap into something. I really uh, agree with that. Important. I really agree with that. And that is about Mars in, you know, Mars and Gemini words are weapons. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Who are you going to hurt? Who, what bullets are you going to send with that? Yeah. You do need to be careful. Yeah. Uh, of course, it, you know, it's, you know, they're honed, they're sharp, they're direct, it's pointed. Mm -hmm. um, and interestingly enough, you know, so for Sagittarians, you may find that you're in a war of words. Yes. Yeah, it's relationships, isn't it? Yeah. Someone directly oh, aiming nice. words directly at you that are maybe mm. unkind. Mm. Mm. so yeah i mean there's you know it's also important to use this timing of mars in gemini once it moves into gemini in august it's it's all go for it wherever gemini falls in your horoscope but be aware that the last two months of the year there may be this sense of slowing down i mean i know i always take mars retrograde very personally being a scorpio with aries ascendant i mean the the two mars signs and i quite often find i'm in a position where i'm powerless I'm not in control. And I find that so frustrating. So, but you can't get as much done. You really have to kind of surrender a bit and take a step back. And interestingly, Mars is going to be square Neptune in Pisces. That's going to be the main aspect while it's in. So, you know, there is going to be this sense of needing sometimes to, to surrender, um, you know, to, to sort of withdraw perhaps during those last few months in particular. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's interesting. So, so long as you're not constantly trying to push ahead during that time mm -hmm. about what's useful to do while Mars is in Gemini, and this is all sort of mental activities, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's actually can be very useful for, say, Aquarians. Um, I, I, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking about Aquarians. It's creative again for aquarian it's the rethinking stuff redoing stuff it's or it can be um but when it actually goes retrograde it can also be accident prone can't mm. it as well as you know not having that forward drive losing its sense mm. of direction mm. mars can be accident prone and i think you know that's particularly important to keep in mind for aquarians um and whose sixth house is it going to be in Ooh. Capricorn. Yeah, Capricorn as well. Mm. Uh, and for Capricorn, it's important to, you know, this is maybe about your health, this Mars transit. Mm. Um, and it's a useful time for you to be looking at that again, you know. Mm. Um, yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> sorry, That's yeah. the end of the year. Interesting. I just also want to point out that Jupiter's back in Pisces those last two months of the year when Mars is retrograde in Gemini. I don't know quite how that's going to play out because, you know, Jupiter just, it's done this interesting, it dipped its toe into Pisces, the middle of 2021. Then we get this real powerful Pisces, Jupiter and Pisces period for the first four months of 2022 up until May the 11th. It then just kind of completes what's going on in Pisces, but Mars is retrograde. So I don't know whether that's about, again, a theme of maybe letting something go or bringing something to completion during that time. So you can then start fresh in 2023. I'm not sure, but it's kind of interesting timing. Yeah. Or is it about a loss of direction for certain people? I mean, perhaps, yeah. yeah losing your way. Yeah. So, you know, or allowing yourself not to, like I said, to sort of 
uh, it's like a soft ending, isn't yeah. it? Rather yeah, yeah. than having a hard ending, ending and forging ahead. We yeah. need to talk about eclipses. We do. Because uh, there are some. <laughs> there are some, as usual. <laughs> there, always are. Uh, there are a couple of total lunar eclipses, though, which is fun. Um, yeah. And the eclipses are in Taurus and Scorpio. Yep. Uh, all of them are within that axis, which is to do with, you know, money and passion, money and obsession. Yep. And the earth, the the earth. Fixed signs. Um, And, you know, we, they, let's just see, where does, where do they happen? Well, the dates, there's April the 30th is a solar eclipse, May 16th, a lunar eclipse, October the 25th, a solar eclipse, November the 8th, a lunar eclipse. I mean, yeah, there's, I think, some interesting things to point up, to point out. The solar eclipse in Taurus on April 30th is conjunct Uranus, as is the lunar eclipse on November the 8th, Taurus, and that brings in Uranus. So eclipses and Uranus are often very similar. They bring the unexpected, don't they? It's the things you don't see coming. Um, you know, eclipses, that shadow falls, um, and what's hidden comes to light. They are the turning points. It's where there's accelerated growth. It's a time where you have to reorient your compass, ready or not, sometimes. So I think those, you know, the eclipses that are in Taurus with Uranus pulled in, there's a real, you know, this is the time for kind of change, shock, surprises. Um, yeah, there's a catalyst. They are very catalysty, and they <laughs> wherever they fall in your chart. Yeah. Um, there's going to be change. There's going to be evolution. There's there's potential eventually for growth maybe not at the eclipse Mm. you know it it clears it opens doors i see them as opening doors and Mm. sometimes you open a door and it's like the hatch and you know gravity and everything goes through Mm. (laughs) um or it's um or you open a door and things come in yeah Uh, it can really go either way yeah yeah um interesting for taurus and i mean you know taurian I, lo- I love the fact, bless Taurus, you know, that sign of fixed earth doesn't like change. Taurus, you've had Uranus in your star sign now since 2018. So it's like if, you, if you're if you not used to change by now, crikey. <laughs> but there's more on the way. And it depends where, you know, where your sun in Taurus falls and where Uranus is in relation to that. But likely, I mean, if your birthday is on or around April 30th, you've got this you know, you've got this solar eclipse and Uranus. That is a time just to say, right, let's do it. Uh, you can't, you can't stay. Don't hold on somewhere. You know, in your life, don't hold on with this eclipse. It's a time to let go, be free, move yeah. things forward, um, and and probably doing that in a way that could be quite dramatic or fast or powerful as well. Um, so, really, a big year for Taurus with these eclipses. Really big, and also quite. It's interesting because in a way there there's a lot of other stuff a lot of noise going on and actually these eclipses are very personal there's a lot you know there's a lot of noise going on in the collective Mm. but then but actually Taurus is making big changes in their own life Mm. you know uh, I think they may be one of you know if you're Taurian friends maybe the people who make the biggest changes that you see around you Mm. Um, and the Scorpios as well actually um, and this is maybe a shift of like residence, like where you live, country. I'm thinking of actually, you know, my brother's a Taurus. He's going to be moving to Germany mm-hmm. um, at this time. And, you mm-hmm. know, there's a, um, and I think that's not, I think actually, actually, I think the timing is really good for him mm-hmm. uh, to do that. And also, so you're a Scorpio and you're probably going to be moving house mm-hmm. or, fly, you know, I know you've mm-hmm. been in a liminal place for a while, mm-hmm. but actually. I mm. think that um, it's surprise. It's often the case when you have the nodes that there is a, a, a big yeah. move. Um, yeah. It's it's the beginning of a new chapter, isn't it? There's a part of your life comes to an end. It's a beginning of a new chapter, whether that's to do with you know where you live, the sort of direction of your life, your relationship status. I mean, for Taurus and Scorpio in particular. This is, you know, it's your star sign, but it's your opposite star sign. So your relationships change too. It's the, you know, it's the big things in life that that are shifting. Yeah. I mean, that's either a divorce or a marriage, one or the other, you know, it could be. It really yeah. could be. It's very, it's some kind of dramatic change in, in relationships for certain people. Yeah. Um, 
and the, the other two star signs that this is really important for Leo and Aquarius, because again, yeah. it's the foundation axis of your chart. So it's your roots, it's your home, and also it's your future path, it's your career. So again, I think it's an important eclipse cycle for those two star signs. Those areas of your life too are likely to be in flux or changing in some way. And it's actually, I, th I think with the eclipse, it's a good time to make these big decisions. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, I need to, you know, I need to do this now. Um, so maybe not um, at the eclipse, but around the eclipse. This eclipse energy it suffuses the whole year, you know. Yeah. So yeah. you don't need to wait for that eclipse to move to Germany or, yeah. you know, for Leo's, this is, you know, about uh, status, right? Mm -hmm. So it's about making, you know, deciding to launch your business or get married. I, you know, I often see marriage on that mid heaven because it's a change of status. Yeah, absolutely. Um, or divorce or whatever it is to break free, to be actually be more you. And that's one of the things I love about Uranian energy. It's mm. called what Uranus encourages us, us to do is to be more radically ourselves, mm. you know, mm. in whatever way that is. And for Leo's, it's to be seen to be more radically yourself. You know, if you've always wanted to wear a purple beret and um, <laughs> walk down the street in loon pants, now's your chance this year. And that, that applies to Taurus as well. Taurus and Leo, you know, you can yeah. be that um eccentric real authentic self yeah being brought out at these you know because with the help of the eclipses and it's like the eclipses are here to help you on us aren't they yeah and like, that, I mean, yeah that what you're talking about actually fits the jupiter neptune it does, it? That fashion as well isn't it this is a year to be yeah. <laughs> who you want it. it's <laughs> like stop holding back and not being who you are i mean really just go for it <laughs> Yeah. I, I, so I think that's lovely for and uh, for Scorpios as well. You know, it's like, OK, mm. go out with whoever it is that you really, you know, be uh, partner up with the really crazy person yeah. that you would never yeah. have touched before. Yeah, the person 20 years younger than yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. Don't yeah. you see that quite often that Uranus in the seventh is a big age gap that oh, we're yeah. Yeah, it is. It, it's 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 a kind of a relationship that kind of shocks people when they see it. It's like, oh, right. oh what are you doing with that 102 year old guy? <laughs> oh, that could be about money, actually, <laughs> in Taurus. <laughs> oh, what are you doing with the incredibly rich? Yeah, <laughs> she said to Paul Daniel. So what did you see in the billionaire? <laughs> Paul Daniels was it? I can't remember. I don't know. Great line. It's obviously a line one needs to ask Priscilla Zuckerberg. What is it that you see in the billionaire Mark Zuckerberg? Hmm. <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I mean, and, and also just on the eclipses, you know, I know not everybody likes eclipses because they they can be, can be quite dramatic and yeah. they bring the unexpected and they may bring things that you're not so keen on. So don't launch, don't launch stuff on eclipse dates if you can help it. Wait for a little while and see what emerges and then take advantage of the sort of changing situation as well. Um, yeah. So just add that proviso about the eclipses. Yeah, and also consider this eclipse energy as this underlying theme of the year, not, oh, I have to wait for the eclipse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, actually, that's not right. No. It's actually already ongoing, this change. And you may, you know, make the change a month before the, the eclipse or t even six months before the eclipse or six months after. Mm -hmm. um, this is why astrologers talk about eclipses having a very long lead time and a long exit time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the day itself can be dramatic, too. Mm -hmm. I completely agree that I wouldn't, you know, make a big decision on the day of the eclipse. Mm -hmm. Um, just on a collective level, I kind of like all this, you, you know, the, the Uranus in Taurus and also Jupiter, Neptune in Pisces, which are, you know, going to be big themes of the year ahead. That can be very innovative for what we do with the Earth, you know, the Earth signs and um, Earth and nature and also water. You know, there's, there's likely to be some real innovative breakthroughs in those areas with, with this coming. Um, so I do like that, actually. I like it too. I jolly hope so as well. I mean, interestingly, well, uh, you know, I write the fashion column for the um, uh, astrological journal here. 
And I, I think that fashion is really interesting with that Neptune, Jupiter in Pisces and Uranus in Taurus. Mm. Um, that there's going to be a lot of change because um, Taurus is quite a fashion sign, actually. It's ruled by Venus and you yeah. see designers with Taurus, yeah. uh, a lot of Taurus in their charts. Uh, and I th and Pisces is about, is about imagination. You know, so you get those two working together and there's going to be a lot of innovation, as you say. It's going to be interesting. And we mm. really, really need it. Yeah, we do. Uh, really need these changes now. Yeah. Uh, we need to people we need the people who can do stuff who can make stuff who can imagine stuff who can create new ideas to stop us losing the planet yeah you know it's yeah. kind of urgent it is urgent um, um, but the astrology is saying there's potential for it so you know those people who got the ideas now is the time to really make something of them bring them into being you know make them real um, yeah. And that's that's the wonder of this water and earth balance, isn't it? You've got all the ideas, the imagination. The earth says, right, let's let's create this, let's produce it, let's let's bring it into being. So you know, really, the a lot of the this big astrology is really good for that. Mm. I mean, I'm excited about the year ahead. Are you excited? I am. I am very excited. And I was going to say that actually, Uranus and Taurus has already showed itself to be very innovative in terms of you know, climate change and, and yeah. solutions to this. Yeah, yeah. A lot more progress with actual practical solutions in the last yeah. couple of years since Uranus went into Taurus. Yeah. Um, you know, of course there's been the protests and all that, but actually behind the scenes, there has been this progress about what's possible, what we can mm. actually do, mm. what we can make happen. Mm. Um, and the, you know, the, uh, the clash between Saturn and Uranus mm has also been uh you know this they've uh, while well, they've been clashing in 2021 and they're still not far off that square in 2022 mm, yeah. two very sciencey um planets and actually there's been a lot of scientific innovation caused by the pandemic mm. a lot of scientists actually working collectively you know across the around the globe this has also yeah. been a uranus and taurus kind of thing let's get practical come up with solution and do it fast and yeah. this is very uranian this light these this lightning strike of how quickly those vaccines were produced for example is incredible science and that was to do with cooperation mm. um, that was all, i mean that's that's also a symbol of the jupiter in aquarius i think as well yeah um, you know the aquarius the sign of often linked to science i mean that was and, and also the hope Jupiter brings the hope, the protective vaccine as well. Um, so I think it was to do with that. Yeah, but, but that, yeah, well, I agree. You know, this, Sorry, this is going on this this Saturn. The, I think the pos more positive side of that Saturn mm. uh, Uranus square is this, you know, innovation at a time of extreme need. Yeah, and yeah. This is where we are with not just with the pandemic, but also with the climate and yeah. pollution, you know, plastic pollution. Mm -hmm. All these things need to be resolved quickly and immediately. Our only problem is the politicians. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have some your head. Um, mm. I think it's going to be, I think it's gonna be really varied. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Which is interesting after having had quite a mono <laughs> two mm. years, like, mm. oh, trudge, trudge. Mm. I think that there's like real ups and downs, real beginning. And I think that when Jupiter goes into Pisces, I think there's wonderful potential for faith. When it goes into Aries, there's this potential for starting stuff, new stuff. Yeah. 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 And I think Jupiter's just saying to us, come on, we need to get on and do it. We need to, we need to live, you know? So um, I do, I, I, I like the fact that Jupiter seems to be, well, Jupiter is the strong influence. There's some things going on in the background still that aren't going away, but Jupiter is the strongest influence. So really take that with you into 2022 and use Jupiter. You know, it's about it's about having faith, taking risks, having a big vision. And that's, you know, the, I always think that Jupiter teaches us that luck is an attitude. You've got to use it. You've got to kind of get hold of it, <laughs> not just sit back and wait for it to come to you. So, yeah. Good. <laughs> Um, yay! I think that's I, I think that's a wrap, Sally. 
I think that was, I think that's a wrap. And if you want to find out any more, there's, I, you know, I have written a 2022 horoscopes ebook, which is on sale. You can find that on my website. And also Christina has done year ahead horoscopes and you can become a member of oxfordastrologer.com. Um, so please, you know, if you want to know more from us both, do check out our websites and what's on offer. Yeah. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this overview of the year ahead and it gives you more idea of what's coming. But yeah, I've done a little videos for each sign on my for my members. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Okay. <laughs> see you next year, Sally. Yeah, see you next year. See you in 2020.